Well, greetings, everyone. I, I wanted to do a video to talk about um, a post that was made on one of my conspiracy theory. My I have a, a series of videos called My Journey Through the Conspiracy Theory Paradigm. And I think I'll probably add this to that particular uh, series. For, for many of you guys, uh, or at least for some of you, because I know this is, is I'm dating myself. I got into the conspiracy theory paradigm. It was in and around 2008. It might have been 2007. Um, and I was introduced to a book by David Icke called uh, the, I think it was called The Big Secret or The Biggest Secret, something like that. And I, I immersed myself in that. And I read that book several times. It was like that thick. And I read it over and over, uh, at least twice. But then I would refer back to it. And a friend uh, actually uh, uh, let me use it. And I read it. I read it twice. I ended up getting my own copy. And that just took me down the conspiracy theory rab rabbit hole. I got into Credo Mutua. I got into Alex Jones. I got into one of my favorites was um, Jordan Maxwell. Uh, I th he's passed away, so rest in peace. Um, and there's a whole group of people. And then there's people who were doing conspiracy theory paradigm, uh, paradigm videos that I, I either met with or worked with. I remember Freeman Fly, uh, Mark Passio, and uh, there's plenty of other people too uh, that I actually met. I actually met um, uh, Jordan Maxwell in person too. It was at a conference. Uh, but I, I went deep into it. And I think that in, in, in my life, and I'm talking about this in the past too, in my life, it, there are certain uh, periods in my life where I made decisions that really uh, either set me back or set me on the wrong course. And me getting going deep into conspiracy theory paradigm, not only did it set me back, but it set me on, on the wrong course. I, I went down so deep into the rabbit hole and it affected me on so many different levels. Um, and I was focused on that more than anything else. And my family suffered because of it. Uh, my mental health suffered because of it. And I made a lot of bad decisions because of it. Now, this is to say that um, I'm not saying that conspiracy theories are that it's the that it's the wrong that we shouldn't explore these things. That's not the case. What I'm saying is that we have to have balance, and, and there should we should take precautions. And and if we're not balanced, um, as we go down the rabbit hole, like and I was in balance, totally in balance. I, I just it, I was fanatic about it. It can really impact our lives in a really negative way. So th that's what I'm saying here is we have to be careful. And then this person says, and I always remember your name and looked you up today. So that way I could scratch that conspiracy itch that I have. <laughs> LOL. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It never goes away. <laughs> I did a video for members to talk about this because um, not Dave Chappelle, but um, Cat Williams was on Joe Rogan's podcast. And for the most vast majority of that video, they were talking about conspiracy theories. And I got excited. You know, I really got excited about it. You know, I, I, I was getting and then I had to say, wait a minute, calm down. Cause it's, it's, you know, it is. <laughs> you, know, you get that itch. You want to get back. To I said, no, don't don't keep just stay what you're doing. Keep going. Do it, cause life is better these days. Don't don't because I, I made a lot of horrible mistakes when I was in, in the conspiracy and my family suffered because of it. Um, we're in a lot better place these days. And, and part of it is because I got out of the conspiracy theory. Now, are there uh, theories that are true? Yes, absolutely. Um, but uh, I went so deep with the reptilian shapeshifters and the FEMA death camps and, you know, the, the world was going to end. And, and I remember there was one that planted Nibiru and planted X and, and uh, you know, the end of the world, a lot of the end, end of the world types of prophecy stuff. That, and we're still here. OK, <laughs> anyway. But then there was there's a, a plenty of other uh, what we would call conspiracy theories back uh, then that proved to be true. Um, but uh, the, the point is that we have to have balance as we approach these things. And I had I, I just threw caution to the wind. And I went in the, the, down that rabbit hole deep and uh, got lost in it and uh, made a lot of mistakes, um, lost a lot and lost uh, mental health, suffered because of it and, and uh, uh, lost my mind at a certain point. It, it just it, it can put you in a very dark place. Um, but every once in a while you get that scratch, that itch you want to scratch. <laughs> OK. <laughs> But I did a video to talk about that because when I was watching the the uh, Joe Rogan interview, him interviewing Cat Williams, they were mainly talking about conspiracy. Then I was getting excited. I said, no, the calm down. I was getting excited at first. So I understand that. And then they said, but I find myself to be in the same place. And they're saying that they've progressed beyond the conspiracy theory paradigm, or at least they're in a, they approach it in a much more balanced way. And that's good. They said, I thought I'd do. Uh, and although I do recognize the conspiracies that are real, I, it, it annoys me when I go in, into YouTube chats and other channels and people think that we haven't been to outer space. Yeah, there there is conspiracies. There is a lot of uh, conspiracy theories dealing with space. Um, the moon land landings were a hoax. Um, another one, I guess you can say, is the flat earth uh, theory. That's uh, more recently. That one's picked up a lot of traction uh, with people. Uh, flat earth. I remember that was, when I when I was really deep in the conspiracy theories, it wasn't that the world was flat. It was that the world was hollow. And that uh, it, it, call, it, it was called the hollow earth theory. Anybody remember that one? The hollow earth. I got deep into that. Uh, the, and 
See, back then, uh, YouTube was just coming on to the scene, uh, and, and uh, but mainly there was like uh, forums back then. There'd be some websites. Uh, I can't remember what that guy's name was who had a website uh, that I used to go on all the time. I can't remember. I, I can't remember his name right now, but I remember he had uh, he had like on a wig for his picture. He had on a wig and a mustache because he didn't want to show his identity. Uh, uh, was it rents rents dot com? Uh, I want to say Alex Rents or Mike Rents, something like that. I could be wrong, but I, I, it just came to mind. But he had there were people who had forums and stuff. You go on their forums, and I, m I remember this one Hollow Earth one, and this really impacted me because I remember it to this day, and it put me in such a extreme levels of fear. And that fear that fear turns into anxiety, and then from there it can really get put you in a really dark place. Um, but the Hollow Earth, I remember there was this one forum. I can't remember wh which website it was on. Um, and there, there was this guy telling the story. They say how he had went and he found a cave and he went into this cave and it just kept going on and on. Um, and I think he said he had a, a torch or something at first, but then he found these these uh, pathways that had lighting. And it was and it wasn't like uh, light bulbs. It was some other kind of I don't know uh, futuristic lighting system that we could he couldn't identify. But but there, you can walk through. And he said he just kept going and it would descend even further, descend any further. And it was intriguing. You know, he was talking about how the earth is hollow and, and how there are civilizations under the earth. And then he, it gets to the point where he, he says he comes to this precipice. It's like the edge and there's, it's like a cliff and there's lighting emanating from light emanating from, from down below over this cliff. And he starts and he sneaks up. It's still dark in there. But there's these lighting sources, but it's still dark, you know, uh, relative to actually being on the surface. And he says he slowly comes up over the precipice and he looks down and he looks down and he sees these uh, 20 foot tall humanoids walking around. And I mean, it scared the mess. <laughs> now, now, on one hand, when I think about it now, it's like ridiculous. But back then, I, I believe I, I was so deep. I was really getting deep into the conspiracy theory paradigm and I would believe anything at first. And then try to prove it not to be true, which is this inappropriate pro approach because anyone can tell you anything, uh, and it doesn't with no substance whatsoever. And then you, you're the one who's supposed to prove it. No, it shouldn't go that way. Uh, the proof should be right. Now this guy didn't provide any proof. Now, he didn't take any photographs, any pictures, any video, or anything, anything like that. Uh, so there was no proof. But I believe that, and it put me in extreme levels of fear. The point I want to get to was that the, back then a lot of stuff was on forums. Now, once YouTube came onto the scene. There were other platforms too. I can't remember uh, some of the names because a lot of them are defunct these days. But there was other platforms too that came onto the scene. People started uploading conspiracy theory related videos onto um, these platforms. But YouTube became the hub. It's not anymore because YouTube, their policies changed, especially after Google acquired YouTube. Once the transi transition took place where it was not just website based and forum based, the transition took place where it was actually social media. That's when it really blew up. That's when people like Alex Jones really. Uh, uh, there was another guy, Cooper, I can't remember his first name right now. He kind of preceded Alex Jones, but Alex Jones kind of took the mantle and took it to a whole other uh, uh, level. You got, some of you guys may remember uh, Cooper. I can't remember his name right now for some reason. Um, he wrote the book, uh, Behold the Pale Right, William, William Cooper. He wrote the book, Be Behold the Pale White Horse. Um, so the reason why I'm bringing this up is because I remember back then uh, on YouTube, there was a lot of videos that were talking about alien conspiracies. And one of the conspiracies, like I said, was the hollow earth. That's how I got into the topic. But another one was that the, the earth, and more recently is the earth is, was flat. But then also extraterrestrial life. And there were these videos that would come up. Um, I can't remember the guy's name right now. Uh, Lear, something Lear. I can't remember. He, he had a whole thing, the UFO chronicles or something like that. He was talking UFO stuff and... Oh, there were so many different people. I can't remember a lot of these people, the names, but I can remember their websites. Just go to their websites, order the DVDs and all that stuff. There's two things here. We, on one hand, we have to, we have to be careful. Um, there are conspiracy theories that when we research, they prove to be true. Wow, it just reminds me of other ones too, like the FEMA death camps. They were talking about, I remember the Amero. They were talking about how this one world currency that was going to be called the Amero. There was a guy, I remember he did this, but he passed away, rest in peace. Um, Caruso, I think he was a, a film director or film producer, something like that. But he he talked. I remember he did a video to talk about that, and, and uh, it was part of the New World Order. And here we are, over a decade later, and there's still no Amero. You know, and it sounds convincing back then. I, I just think we have to be careful. There's nothing wrong with getting into conspiracy theories. We just have to be careful 
about how we approach them. And we shouldn't assume that it's true. We should assume that it's not true and then try to get the evidence that we need to prove that it's true. In other words, there have to be some proof, not just because someone says that something is true. So that, that one comes to mind. I mean, he, he stated it with such conviction that it was believable, and I believed it, but here we are all these, it's over a decade, and, and it never came to pass. There's a lot of uh, conspiracy theories, uh, date-based conspiracy theories that never came to pass. That's one point I want to make, that we just have to be careful. We have to have an approach. There should be balance there, and we shouldn't accept things outright. The idea is, that, okay, it's a theory. Let me, let me do the research, and, and let me uh, approach this intellectually to where I can either find the evidence to prove or find the evidence to disprove this particular theory. And if it is proven, then it's not a conspiracy theory, it's a conspiracy fact. If it's, if it's uh, not proven, then you can either say that it's still a, consp a conspiracy theory or that it's a conspiracy lie, <laughs> okay? So that's a, or untruth, if you, if you hear. So that's one thing, but, but there's another aspect of this. The need to have to, or, or it's really a feeling that you have to argue with people about it. And it goes both ways. If you believe a conspiracy theory, that you have to argue with other people to, to make them believe in. Or that if you don't believe a conspiracy uh, theory, that you have to argue with people who believe in it. And that you have, to, you have to change them somehow. You have to change their mind. These two aspects are, are both unhealthy. They're unhealthy approaches to this. So what I'm getting at is that, because I used to do that too. I, it was like almost like you want to convert people. You want to make people know. When I was deep into conspiracy theories, and I used to believe in all of them, okay? And I really thought that I knew things and other people didn't know and that they were not in the know. They didn't know the quote unquote truth. Even the terminology just goes to show you how deep, deep I was into this stuff because you, you believe it wholeheartedly. And then you want to convert other people so that they know the truth and that they believe what you believe in. Come to find out, here I am all these years later with wisdom. And the vast majority of what I believed in was untrue. And yet I used to go into these campaigns to argue with people and, and to dissuade people from, you know, being part of the matrix and being part of the system. And, uh, you know, you have to come to the truth of, with the conspiracy theories and the New World Order and the reptilian shapeshifters. The list goes on and on and on. The global bankers and the global elite. And it goes on and on and on. Um, both aspects of this is unhealthy. And this is where I, I think people need to be careful. You, you don't go blindly into this believing everything that comes across your desk, comes across your com computer screen, which I, and I've done that. And then you also don't have to, you shouldn't feel as if it's your job to convert other people to your beliefs. In other words, if you believe in these conspiracy theories, that it's your job to convert people to believe in them. Or if you, at this point, you know, in your journey uh, through this conspiracy theory paradigm, or at least you've gotten out of it to where you have, uh, you know, you, you can think rationally about these things where, and you can say, no, that conspiracy theory is not true, and but this person believes that it is true, so it's my job now to go and change their mind. Okay, both of these aspects, it's unhealthy. And what I would encourage people to do is, is um, to not spend time arguing with people and going back and forth. What, whether you are a cons you believe in a conspiracy theory or you believe that a conspiracy is not, not, not true, because... At the end of the day, it, the, the person who believes or disbelieves, it's going to be up to them to come to whatever the actual truth is. You can try to encourage them, but it, 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 I, I used to think that that was part of my job. But these days, I don't. I, I don't. I, people, I leave people to their own devices. I may do a video like this every so often just to kind of give people a, a something to think about. You know, it's like fair warning. If you're going to go down the conspiracy theory paradigm, go down it with with balance. Don't go blindly like I did because it can really mess you up and, and put you back in life. Your life progressions become encumbered because of you can go too deep and you can get caught up in it like I got caught up in it. Then on the other hand, I can tell people, listen, if you're going to go down into the conspiracy theory paradigm, you know, there's a way that you can go down it with balance and you can get something out of it that can actually benefit you, but it doesn't become a detriment to you. And it doesn't encumber your ability to be successful in life and enjoy life and be happy. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? And then I can also say, listen, uh, I've been there where I wanted to make people believe. And there was a time where I wanted to, to get people to stop believing in conspiracy theories, videos. but with wisdom and at my age and going through what I've gone through at this point, that's not my job. See, life is a journey, and, and, and the best that I can do is to share my experience, and hopefully someone can kind of connect to that, and then they can see, wait a minute, okay, he really messed up here, he messed up there. Maybe I can learn something from that so that I don't get caught up and fall into that pitfall like he did. And trust me, I fell deeply. 
See, that's a different approach than saying, okay, it's my job to go in and argue with people and prove and, and so I can disprove to them that what they believe is no, no, I don't, I don't, I don't, it's just, it's not, it's unhealthy. <laughs> it's unhealthy for you. And it's going to be unhealthy for them. There's one other thing I want to say too, is that, that one of the things I learned back then was that oftentimes individuals who have a certain uh, set of, of belief systems that are so deep, deeply entrenched, and it can be around anything, but we're talking about conspiracy theories in this case, that when they have people who question them or when they have people who try to dissuade them from those beliefs or try to prove those beliefs to be untrue, they actually become more fortified in their beliefs because they feel like this is part of this uh, journey of knowing the truth. I'm, this is part of it that they're going to persecute me. Uh, the way that I look at it at this point in my life is that it's not my job to pr prove conspiracy theories are true. It's not my job to disprove conspiracy theories uh, to be true because that's frustrating. My job is to, to use my life experience as someone who was a conspiracy theory a theorist and was deep into it. I use my life experience as an example and share with people that some of the pitfalls so that they can make the best decisions that they can make in their life. And that could be that instead of going 500 feet down the, the, the rabbit hole, maybe you'll go 450. <laughs> Instead of going 450, maybe you, maybe you just go 435. You know what I'm saying? To where it's not too deep where you get lost in it and then you lose, you know, so much in life because of it. You know, again, like I said before, I, I wouldn't uh, tell people, listen, you shouldn't uh, go get into conspiracy theories altogether. I wouldn't I wouldn't say that. You know, life is life and there's a journey and there's information that we get into. I think that there could be benefit to it. It's just we have to have balance and we have to have a balanced approach to it to where we don't get caught up into it and get lost in it. And I got caught up in it and um, I got lost in it and I suffered because of it. My wife suffered because of it and my children suffered uh, because of it. And I don't want that for anybody. OK. All right. So, again, just be careful. All right. And thank you for sending me the, the message. I'll post this video here in my Conspiracy Theory uh, Journey Archive uh, series. And if you guys haven't watched the other previous videos in this series, go ahead and check them out. I think that it, it'd be beneficial. OK. All right. Y'all take care. Peace.